now at 6. We're just hours from tip-off. Notre Dame getting ready to hit the court for round one of March Madness. We're learning more in the investigation into a double homicide in Goshen. And a neighborhood upset. Children caught vandalizing home, but they were never taken to jail. First, fast, accurate, with Jennifer Copeland and Rick Schutt. You're watching WSBT 22 News at 6. A broken windshield, rocks thrown at homes, and thefts. Just a few of the vandalism reports police are investigating along Iowa Street in South Bend. But here's the thing. Six kids were detained by police for their involvement, and they were let go. WSBT 22 Suzanne Spencer has been digging into this. So, Suzanne, why did this happen? Anytime police or kids are involved, excuse me, things can get tricky. In this instance, one of the kids even had a stolen piece of property on him, according to police, but he wasn't arrested. We wanted to know why. They were throwing rocks, and I figured, I thought, why are they throwing it up that high? But I realized they're, they're trying to hit the satellite disc, and then there's the rock up there. It was a thud that woke up Sylvia Wagner late Thursday night. It was terrifying because it was a big, big crack over here. Then it was a big crack over, a boom over here. I ca caught across the bed. I got my phone. I called 911. Five vandalism reports, six kids detained by the South Bend police after a broken windshield, stolen items, punctured homes, but the kids were released to their parents. A neighbor who didn't want to be identified says something has got to change. That gives them open season, open season to destroy and do whatever they want with unfettered access. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave the community and the people? That's, that's the scary thing. So we went to the Juvenile Justice Center. Why weren't these individuals arrested? We certainly look at the offense for which the police have found probable cause, but then we look at other factors such as prior history, um, issues of safety for the child, safety for the community, um, and, um, and put all those together so that probation officers are making the, our decision. Once a child is detained by police, they have two options, the JJC or sent home. The immediate short-term question of detention is largely a question of safety, community safety and the child's safety. But Morgan acknowledges work needs to be done. We got to answer when somebody sees that young person through a rock through my window. Why can't we do something about this immediately? That very question is what the agency is working on. They're looking at other options after a child is detained besides jail or going home. Now, as for these six boys, each received a notice that they have to go to court soon. It's also important to point out the prosecutor will review each of their cases, as with any crime, to determine if charges should be filed. And even though they weren't taken to jail, Rick, they could still face some charges. All right, Suzanne, thank you. We're learning brand new details in the investigation into a double murder in Goshen. A probable cause documents were just filed hours ago against Diego Ramos and Luis Rivas. WSBT 22's Hillary Paolo is live in Goshen tonight. Hillary, those court documents now laying out a possible motive. Yes, the shooting appears to be motivated by gang violence, according to probable cause documents. The Elkhart County prosecutor says probable cause for murder charges has been established against Diego Ramos and Luis Rivas. That was in, according to documents filed in court just today. 22-year-old Ramos also faces preliminary charges of contempt of court and an immigration detainer. 19-year-old Luis Rivas is also being held in the Elkhart County Jail right now. Now, Goshen police say Marco Carmona Gonzalez and Jose Nava Orozco were found dead Sunday at Brookside Manor neighborhood. The cause of death was multiple gunshot wounds. Court documents show Rivas used a cell phone to search the internet for images of Jose Nava about 20 minutes before the murders. Less than 30 minutes after the murders, Ramos advised his mother that Nava was dead well before the identities of the victims had been released to the public by police. Court reports also show several casings and bullets were recovered from the murder scene, matching casings found in Ramos's home and vehicle. An Immigration and Customs Enforcement spokesperson adds Ramos is an illegal immigrant and documented gang member. Ramos and Rivas are both being held without bond, and a hearing is set for next Thursday. Formal charges and a decision on formal charges are expected sometime next week. In Goshen, Hillary Powell, WSBT 22 News.
Hey, happy Friday, the weekend. We made it and the weather, it's not gonna be too bad. A little cooler than average. Temperatures right now, most of us in the 40s, but a live look in Elkhart shows the sun's trying to peek through. We're at 42 in uh, South Bend, but down the road in Elkhart, hey, five degrees warmer at 47, 46 in Goshen, 40 in Benton Harbor, 50 though in Rochester. So a decent spread in temperatures here. North winds, what's gonna keep us a little bit on the cool side through the weekend. Temperatures late February standards versus mid-March. Future cast temperatures will show you as we go through the next couple of hours tonight. We do fall into the uh, low 30s, but as we get towards tomorrow, Hey, we're near 40. We do have a little bit of rain, maybe a flake or two of snow to track for the weekend. And again, uh, some sunshine as well. So we're going to talk about that and look ahead to a warming trend and your forecast in just a couple of minutes. All right, Matt, thank you. New at six, we now know how much it'll cost the city of South Bend to improve its police department. The Board of Public Works has approved spending $20,000 to hire a consulting firm. That firm will start doing several interviews next week with police leaders and officers, public officials, and also you. This firm will focus the review on the mid to upper levels of leadership. It'll then give the department options for improving leadership recruitment and retention. Also new tonight at six, if you love catching a film at Movie Six, you'll have to find a new theater. Cinemar closed this theater. It's not clear why. The theater was known though for cheaper tickets. A long time football rivalry will heat up on the basketball court tonight. Notre Dame opens NCAA tournament play against the Michigan Wolverines in just a few hours right here on WSBT 22. Sports director Pete Byrne joins us from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn where the Irish are practicing more than just their skills on the court. Pete. Yeah, that's right, Rick. You know, so many basketball fans are familiar with the tune One Shining Moment, the iconic song that's synonymous with March Madness. But it turns out it's more than just a catchy tune for the TV. When I went into the Irish locker room yesterday, I found out that the Irish players and Coach Mike Bray are pretty big fans as well. I got to start by having you watch this. The ball is tipped. I saw it. And it did hit. You are. You're running for your life. Look, I'm better than Barkley. You My voice is better than Barkley. One shiny. I think, you know, I have a career maybe in Vegas. <laughs> One shiny moment. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, you know, to do that with Coach Bray and the guys. You know, it was a great experience. And to see it on TV was, you know, great. And when it's done. All I know is one shining moment. That's all I know. I don't know the rest. But uh, that was a fun thing to do. So who's the better singer on the team? Is it you? Is it Zach? Is it Coach? Uh, Coach Bray is a great singer. As far as the players, I think I'm the I'm the Beyonce of the group. And, you know, they're the they're the other two. They're my backup singer. One shining moment. This guy over here says that he's the Be he's the Beyonce of the group. And you and Zach are the other two. No, I mean, that's, I'm the Beyonce. I'm the I'm the Jay Z. I'm I'm the leader. I'm the best singer on the team, and everybody knows that. You can't be Beyonce and Jay-Z, can you? I could be, uh, I could be Beyonce, you know, when they weren't together, and I could be Jay-Z, I guess, when they are together. That makes no sense. So I guess that's, what, that's what's going to happen. One shot and more. That's good. Charles Barkley with the assist on that one, and the jury's out as to who the best singer is on the Irish team. Of course, Rick, nothing makes a shining moment quite like the upsets, and we've seen quite a few of them in this tournament, including a big one today as Michigan State went down this afternoon. And avoiding the upset is what the Irish are going to try and do later tonight when they take on Michigan here on WSBT. When I come back a few minutes from now in sports, I'll take a closer look at how the Irish plan on doing that. But for right now, I think the fans really want to know how good your singing voice, yeah, man. No, we're ready. We're ready. We're, we, we want, want you to do it with us. You start it off, and then Matt's going to finish. <laughs> Matt's here, yeah. Ready? One, Go ahead, Pete. two, three. One shiny. The, the ball is tipped. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, satellite delay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's just hearing it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We'll see you a little and bit later. Where were you? <laughs> Matt, uh -oh. you're supposed to step in there. Come on. A local school district <laughs> said it's growing so fast, some of its schools need to expand. Coming up, how Goshen is adding more classrooms without any construction. Now, that's ahead. Matt, never again. Not yeah. doing it. He is tracking the possibility of some snow, though, for the weekend. The areas that could see it, we'll talk about that next. Now, your accurate first alert weather forecast with meteorologist Matt Rudkin. Looking at a cool weekend, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, as cool as my seating. <laughs>
think I said one, and the word one yeah. was all I got out. Don't, Where were you, Rick? Don't quit your day job, all right? You don't yeah, want to hear me sing. You don't want to hear me sing. Well, my kids like to hear me sing. They love it. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, Do they? No, yeah. No. Yeah, I'm going to ask so. them. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't. Say about that. Yeah. Hey, the forecast this weekend, not, not too bad. Temperatures are uh, going to be a little bit below average. February standards. So we're back to February normal this weekend. Highs lower to middle 40s. Isolated rain showers, maybe a flake or so, uh, of snow mixing in. Certainly no accumulation on Saturday. Much warmer, though. Next week, rain and storms in the forecast. Another look in Elkhart. You can see the sun trying to peek through there as we uh, we go through the uh, late afternoon, early evening hours. 42 in South Bend, 41 in Chicago. Colder air to our north and west, but much warmer. On downstate Evansville, for example, it's around 60, 62 in Louisville. It's in the mid 60s in parts of Tennessee and, and West Virginia. Here at home, 39, the coolest spot in Michigan City. Mid 40s for most locations. 50, though, down in Rochester, 40, Benton Harbor. Again, there's that north wind that's keeping us a little bit on the cool side. Satellite and radar imagery will show you a couple breaks in the clouds. Notice up north, a couple rain showers and snowflakes. Our weather for Saturday will be a little bit mix of the two. So we'll, we'll see a little sunshine, probably mostly cloudy skies, but because the air is cold enough, could see a wet snowflake or two mix in. We're dry tonight. Temperatures fall into the mid uh, 30s when you join us again late tonight and after the uh, basketball game, the, the Notre Dame game. Here's the cold front that went through. That's why the winds are from the north, but there's not much moisture with it. That's why we didn't see much rain. We brought the rain and snow, uh, snow air masses up here a little bit. Uh, as we get towards Saturday, it's not going to be a big deal. No issues on the roads. No, uh, no issues if you have outdoor plans. Just scattered showers. We only have a 30% chance. Our future cast Model shows that to you. Here's 7 a.m. We're dry. As we get to the afternoon, notice it's around us. That's why we kept in at least the chance. Not real concerned, again, of anything significant. Actually, we're not at all concerned. So no big deal this weekend. Looks nice on Sunday. We'll go partly cloudy to uh, even mostly sunny for the day on Sunday. Tonight, 30 degrees, mostly cloudy, so certainly cold compared to the past many nights. 40 tomorrow, that's the best we could do. Maybe mid-40s uh, for some of you. They get a little more sunshine than clouds. And put a little bit of a mix in there than just uh, rain shower by the afternoon. 40s again on Sunday. 50s and 60s though return as we get towards next week with showers and thunderstorms possible before we cool back down late week. So a pretty typical spring looking forecast there with up and down temperatures, which by the way, spring starts, uh, starts, uh, well, it's confusing. Officially. I guess officially yeah. it's Sunday in universal time, but in eastern and central time zone to be Saturday evening. So spring starts this weekend. It's right soon, yeah. yes. Yeah. It is. All right. Thanks, Matt. Hey, no problem. I was just in the right place at the right time. She was a big honor today for a mail carrier being awarded for saving a woman's life. How it all happened, that's all new at 6. First to cover breaking news with Jennifer Copeland and Rick Schutt. Your accurate first alert weather forecast with meteorologist Matt Rudkin. And sports with Pete Byrne. You're watching WSBT 22 News at 6. Learning in a mobile classroom, that will soon be reality for some students in Goshen. More families are moving to the area, so enrollment is up at both Model Elementary and Goshen Middle School. Right now, there are long-term plans to build an intermediate school for 5th and 6th graders. Until then, the district is looking to set up two portable units at each school. There are a couple types of modules. You can have a single classroom modular, which fits about around 30 students. Um, and then you can have a double modular, which actually has two classrooms within one unit. The units should be up and running at both schools by the time school begins in August. It seems like I just got sworn in and all of a sudden I'm retiring. And the old guys, when I got on, said that it'll happen, it'll, it'll go fast. And I said, yeah, right, and it has. After 25 years with the South Bend Police Department, this sergeant is hanging up his hat. The department held a retirement celebration today for Sergeant Bill Kraus. He says he's seen a lot of changes over the last quarter of a century. Kraus says he will miss the camaraderie and the people, and he isn't completely retiring his badge, though. He is joining the Notre Dame Security Police Department. All right, you know, the post office in Granger also held a celebration today. Mm -hmm. This one to honor a carrier. Yeah, Tracy Swartz received the Postmaster General Hero Award. She was driving home in Mishawaka last fall when she saw a woman lying on the street. Swartz ran to check on her. She quickly realized the woman was not breathing and didn't have a pulse. Now, she started CPR with another woman's help. Police arrived and found a faint heartbeat. The woman was taken to the hospital and is alive today. She worked at a, a restaurant and bar real close to there. 
So a couple days later, I stopped by there and just to see how she was doing, and they said she was okay. She was still in the hospital, um, but that the doctors had said that she, because CPR was started pretty quickly, she, um, the, it prevented uh, any oxygen deprivation from her brain. The doctors believe the woman suffered a sudden heart attack. Swartz says she's honored to receive this award. Amazing what she did. Yeah, definitely. All right, coming up, we're heading back to New York as Notre Dame gets ready to take on Michigan. That's right, and here's a bracket buster, one of the biggest upsets of March Madness. Michigan State is now out of the tournament. Now, sports with Pete Byrne. Welcome back. We are live tonight in Brooklyn, New York, where, as you have already seen today here on WSBT, March Madness is absolutely living up to its name. A few hours from now in the Barclays Center behind me, Notre Dame will take on Michigan in the 6-11 game. And I should let you know, already in this tournament, the six seeds are 0-2 against the 11 seeds. So here's what the Irish have to do tonight to avoid falling to the upset themselves. We want to play faster. We want to get the ball down the court. That started with our NC State game. I thought we did it at times in D.C., and it helped us. Um, we don't want to just all of a sudden walk it up and, and, and grind. I mean, we've got to be good in the half court because the NCAA tournament many times comes down to half court basketball. So being efficient in the half court, but getting some easy buckets in transition, I think really helps this particular team. Being efficient in the half court, as well as in transition, falls largely on the shoulders of point guard Demetrius Jackson. Making sure, you know, I take care of the ball, making sure, you know, I'm quarterback in the team, getting guys where they need to be, dishing the ball, distributing the ball, and being in attack mode. Last March, you kind of found another gear. I'm curious if you've got something like that in you again this year. I hope so. I hope so. So I'm um, hoping to find my flow individually and uh, so that I can help the team. When it comes to playing the Wolverines, the task is clear. Of the 68 teams in the tournament, only one hit more three-pointers than Michigan. So if you're Notre Dame, defend the arc and exploit the potential mismatch created by Zach August on the other end. You know, they really want to attack from the three-point line. You know, that's what they really rely on as far as their offense. But we just got to be ready to defend the, the arc. I think inside, you know, we'll have an advantage, I think, with Zach inside. I think it's important for us to get down there and, you know, control the tempo and then, uh, you know, control the backboard. You know, control the glass is going to be big for us, both offensively and defensively. You know, if me and Bonzi and, and anybody else who comes in get on there and have the guards come down and attack the rim as well, I think it'll be hard for us to, uh, to get, not get a, a win. Notre Dame and Michigan are scheduled to tip off at 940 tonight. We will be broadcasting the game live right here on WSBT 22. And again, I want to encourage you to all stay with us here on WSBT News. Immediately following CBS's coverage, I will have live post-game reaction with the Irish following their NCAA opener tonight against the Wolverines. But right now, we're going to throw it back to Carl Deffenbaugh in the studio because, Carl, I know you had some crazy madness today in the NCAA tournament to tell us about. That is a fact, Pete. Thank you very much from New York. And only a few things in life that we thought we could rely on. Death, taxes, and Tom Izzo coaching in March Madness. At least until his Michigan State squad suffered maybe the biggest upset in NCAA tournament history today. Denzel Valentine and Sparty coming in as a two seed and one of the title favorites. But Middle Tennessee State, the Blue Raiders, came out on fire. Darnell Harris buries a three and it was 15 to two. Under a minute to play now. Three point game, almost a turnover, but Giddy Potts rattles home a pull up and Middle Tennessee pulls off a stunner 90 to 81, knocking out Michigan State. What a game. Meanwhile, the Notre Dame women start their tournament run tomorrow, hosting 16 seed North Carolina AT. The Irish are a number one seed, heavily favored and on their home floor, but are not taking the Aggies lightly. It's do or die. If, if we lose, we're done. So we need to take it seriously, and I think everyone does. So um, it's been a good week of practice. We just got to be focused. Um, I think that everybody knows what it takes on this team to get to where we want to go to. I think we've proven all year long that we take care of business at hand. I think we've had a lot of opportunities to look past a team, and we have on occasion uh, coasted towards the finish after getting a big lead, and that's something that I think we've spent a lot of time working on. Michigan State was a stunner. That would be an all-time oh, upset yeah. if they somehow lost to North Carolina a and I'm not expecting that tomorrow. There you go. All right, we'll be right back. That's seven-day forecast. Yep, lots of ups and downs, certainly spring-like. Spring begins this weekend, by the way, so we are officially done with winter. May see a snowflake or two to kick in 
spring. Would you have it any other way around here before 60s and thunderstorms next week? There you go. It all melts together. Yeah, it? it really does. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thanks so much for joining us tonight.